Hey guys, what's up? It's Dan here. And I'm DeAndra. You're, You're listening, listening to, to College, College Declassified. Declassified. This podcast is centered around providing you with educational tips to get you prepared for all aspects of college. That includes FAFSA help, college success tips, test taking strategies, scholarships, you name it. We'll be sitting down with experts to talk about how to help you succeed before and during college. We hope you enjoy listening to College Declassified. Hey everybody, my name is Dan. I am the Director of Media and Online Content here, and this is another episode of College GPS. Um, we are joined by some very special guests today. I'm really excited about this episode. I'm here with uh, Mr. Hawkins, uh, Mr. Do Everything, Mr. One Take Jake. Um <laughs> He's also the director of upper, our Upper Bound programs, two of our Upper Bound programs here, and one of our new recently added EOC programs. So I'm super glad he's here. Let's hit him with the applause, man. Hit him with some applause. All right. All right. I like that so much. <laughs> uh, and we are also joined by uh, a superstar, honestly, a superstar. She is uh, a new recipient of the Class of 2022 Gates Millennial Scholarship. Um, she was just admitted into Stanford uh, and all these other amazing things. Also, you know, a, a future UB alumni is the biggest accomplishment hey, in my opinion. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but uh, I will let her introduce herself. Miss Solomon, please tell us more about yourself. All right. Hello. Um, I'm Solomon, as he said. Um, I'm going to be attending Stanford University in the fall. And in addition to getting the Gates Scholarship, I also got the Jack Kent Cook Scholarship. Um, I'm someone that I know my parents, they always describe me as somebody who doesn't sit still. Like, they tell me I grew up on a computer because I'm always trying to research or find something, which I feel like really helped me in the process of achieving my accomplishments. Awesome, awesome. So, Mr. Hawkins, how are you feeling today? I'm really good. I'm really good. I'm glad Solomon took time out of a busy schedule uh, to be with us because I think it's important, you know, we as directors and coordinators talk about what it takes to get to that level. Um, but hearing it from a student's perspective is so much more impactful sometimes to students because um, they speak their language. Um, it's relevant in their time because obviously she's graduating this year. So, yes. um her experiences are like we're living through her experiences. So her being able to share that with that next group of students, I think is awesome. And and the fact that she's taking her time out also talks about her leadership um, because as we go along, although all those things she's been doing or she's talked about are amazing. She's also been doing a lot within the school building at Thorn Ridge throughout her tenure there. So um, hopefully we'll be, have a chance to talk about some of those things. Absolutely. Let, let, let's hit Solomon with the applause, man. I need it. I need it. Turn me up. Turn me up. <laughs> <laughs> Our applause was a little bit louder. It right? was a little but, bit louder. But they, it's due. It's due. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one, the basically the main two goals of this podcast is one, to celebrate you because we're so extremely proud of you and everything that you've done. You embody um, the mission and the vision of this organization. Um, but also, yeah, we want you to serve as um, the lighthouse, the beacon of, you know, Basically, if if I can do it, you can too. You know, which is our message um, that we try to preach. You know, so for our freshmen that are listening to this, our our sophomores that you, that are listening to this, we have, you know, somebody who is really, really doing it. You know, and we want you back four years from now. Um, you know, when you when you graduate, you know, from uh, Stanford. So, um, I guess my first question is just tell us a little bit about your your journey to where you're at now but what were some of the things that you kind of did to prepare for this day um I feel like one of the things that really helped me is just starting really early so like my parents are African immigrants so you know that usually means you know they're very headstrong when it comes to academics but also just me like being their child and seeing their journey of them coming to this country to give me a good opportunity. I feel like that's what really pushed me to just start early. And like one thing with me is that if I don't have the resources right away, like I'm going to Google it. Like my mom always jokes like with my friend, they're like, she's going to Google everything. So whenever I needed something, I would just Google it. I know um, coming into high school, 
after eighth grade graduation, I was already taking, um, I believe, ECT and health so that I could take AP Human Geography my freshman year. So I really had like a plan going into high school, even though it didn't go exactly the way I wanted when I first made the plan. I know that I wanted to take the most rigorous courses. I wanted to be very involved in my school and community. And so I feel like that definitely helped a lot. I know um, I'm on my district, so I used to be on my district um, student board of education. And I knew about that before I entered high school. So like once again, like I really do my research when it comes to doing <laughs> stuff. Like before I get there, I'm gonna know what I'm meeting right, there. Right. So that's one thing that I would definitely like advise to like underclassmen as well. Like just start really, really early. Absolutely. Now, I know, Mr. Hawkins, you can kind of talk about st on a statistic level um, how, you know, the earlier and the better, the more prepared you are going into high school, you know, the more positioned you are for success. So can you kind of talk about that? Absolutely. So one of the things that I really love about Solomon is um, we didn't have to really motivate her to take those rigorous courses. That was something that she was already kind of abreast aware of what she wanted to do where upper bound came into play i believe is supporting her and giving her information um so that she wouldn't make those unnecessary missteps mm -hmm. so when we're looking at students we're always you know encouraging their first generation low-income students so they don't have the in-house resources that those of us who have college degrees can offer to our, our children right and so what we say is hey make sure you take advantage of taking those geometry classes, Joe's geography class, whether they be AP, IB courses, if whichever one is at your school, don't shy away from that. Um, because when you do that, you're better prepared not only to do well in high school, um, when those colleges that are selective, whether it be Stanford, um, MIT, Vanderbilt, and so forth, um, they can see that you're challenging yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're doing successful in those classes, they know that you're college ready. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to those scholarship opportunities or those institutional admissions, you're better prepared as a student. And one of the things that I always tell students, it's just like anything else. If you're if you are not as good in math, you have to practice math. Right. right? It just doesn't happen. So I used to play sports long, 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 long time ago. Uh, and if I wanted to get <laughs> right, long, 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 long time ago. So if I wanted to get better at free throws, I couldn't just say, Oh, I'm gonna get better at free throws and it happened. Mm -hmm. I had to go to the court, practice. Mm -hmm even probably more after practice. So practice was for coaches. So, hey, run my play, understand my play. For me to get better as an individual, I had to go to the park or go to the gym afterwards and keep on practicing on that. Well, it's the same thing in the classroom. You can do your work in the classroom, but if you're struggling in a certain area of math, you need to take additional time, whether it be on our Edmonton platform or Khan Academy or whatever resources available, and you need to practice so you can get better. And again, I believe that's what Salama did um, in those areas because she's always been a bright student, but she never settled to say, okay, I've done all I can and I'm good right. with that. She's always pushed herself. And so starting early, understanding where your areas of improvement are, tackle those early, along with learning those things, it builds confidence. And Absolutely. so as you get those confidence and say, I can take those rigorous courses, I can get an A in those right. AP courses, I can test out and get college credits for the APs, you continue on that momentum and then it just moves you on to the post-secondary level. Right. I love that. So, Salma, kind of talk to us about, you know, one thing that Mr. Hawkins said that I agree with is that you didn't, you've always been bright, right, but you didn't settle for, you know, maybe what was taught in the classroom, um, and you've always been a researcher. So kind of tell us about your process or, you know, what resources you would use to kind of, you know, always sharpen your tools. You know what I mean? So um, I know this is one example I just wanted to bring up that I know Mr. Hawkins helped me with, I believe, in 2020. So like I said, I'm always like starting early and researching, like, for example, different colleges I wanted to apply to, even though I did kind of switch what I wanted to do, because I thought I was going to be a doctor, and then I switched to computer science, but I would research different colleges. So I did start really early with that. But in the middle of my high school career, I switched to computer science. So my list of colleges kind of just changed because obviously you have to look at what's best for your major. Absolutely. So in doing that, I realized that some colleges require a year in calculus, which I would not be able to take because I'm in my school's IB program and the math in the IB program isn't really considered calculus. And I never took, um, took pre-calculus. And so I contacted Mr. Hawkins because I know we're able to take summer classes at South Suburban. 
Um, and even though I never took pre-calculus, I was like, I'm going to take that calculus course because wow. I wanted to apply to the, like these top schools because I know they offer the best financial aid. They have the best resources. They have the best opportunities. And I didn't want to be disadvantaged because I hadn't like taken calculus. Mm -hmm. and so I contacted Mr. Hawkins. I was like, how can I take the placement exam? I studied for the placement exam so I could be placed in calculus. And it was very fast paced, but I actually ended up getting an A, which was very surprising to me because it was a lot of work, like, you know, to have all that information condensed into like a, like an eight week course. It was very difficult, but I ended up getting an A. And I feel like that's one of my strong suits. Like when I really want something, I'll do whatever I can to get it. Like even with the placement exam, I remember studying very hard just so that they could say, yes, wow. okay, you can take calculus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, that's one thing Upper Bound definitely helped with because I feel like if I didn't contact Mr. Hawkins, like how can I take this class, I probably wouldn't be able to apply to some of the colleges that mm. I applied to because I don't have calculus on my like transcript. But now that I took it at South Suburban, I was able to like at least be eligible to, for them to look at my application. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's what Upper Bound is about. You know, um, we offer the academic support, but sometimes the support is just advice on where to go schedule planning um you know um and making the the best of a situation the same thing happened to me um out now <laughs> under much different circumstances <laughs> than yours but uh i was uh going into community college and um i did not do well on my placement exam they wanted to put me in 098 but i also didn't study for it so let that be a lesson to you Absolutely. that you should also study for the placement exam if you're trying to go to community college at all like do not you know um just shrug off the placement exam it is very important um but they wanted to put me in 098 math and um if anybody if you know you know about 098 it does not courses, it does, yes, the developmental count. courses yeah. do not count towards your college uh credits that you need to graduate um with your associate or your bachelor's degree so i was in a heap of trouble i was gonna face potentially an extra year or two of college just with math courses um but i had a counselor um at the college who intervened and said no in the summertime you know you can take this business math course um, and I studied for the business mm -hmm. to get into the business math course, and I was able to pass uh, with a B, you know. So, um, yeah, just another way that um, I wanted to talk about how community college can help high school students, you know, um, and launch them to, you know, where you're at, the highly selective institutions. That's a, I'm so glad that you brought that up because – Many people don't think community college can do anything for them, you know, whether that's once once they graduate and they go for two years or while they're in high school. But, you know, you taking advantage of those courses is, um, like you said, what led you to where you're at today. So one of the things that is important to note um, is the community college has resources for those communities. Correct. Hence the name. The way that I was able to help Salamat navigate that was because of a relationship that was built, right? So that's another thing that those in the trio world understand. Right. Relationship building with your students so you understand the support they need. Every individual student has different needs. Salamat doesn't need most the motivation that another student may need. Exactly. But her being open to receive that information is critical. So when we're talking to students, we remind them, you guys have to be able to communicate with us what your needs are, what your desires are. If you don't know it, it's fine to say you don't know it. Right. But if you do have some idea, help us to help guide you. Mm -hmm. When you say we take the placement test, we fuss all the time. Listen, do not blow off that test. It's important. It's connected to real dollars, right? So if you take the 098 class, that class costs money. You have to pay for that. That comes either out of financial aid or out of your pocket. And so um, not being prepared push you in a position where you have to stay in school longer to earn that degree exactly. or you're taking classes that you really shouldn't have to take because if you have the knowledge and you study, you're better prepared to place and then you can take that calculus class to put yourself in that position. So we talk about relationships with our students. We talk about open communication about what it is. As she said, she wanted to be a doctor when she changed her mind. It was not for us as upper bound staff to say, why are you doing that? It was to say, okay, how do we support you in that change? Do you understand what that means as far as the schools you're going to look to apply to? Absolutely. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's make that. And she said it early enough. 
where the change didn't affect as opposed to getting into school, going two or three years into a major and then totally switching exactly. where you have to start a whole nother program. So um, as we've all said, it's just being prepared, taking those placements tests serious. And then once you have an opportunity to be in a class, take it serious because right. now that's on your college transcript as well. Right. That establishes your GPA. And for a high school student to do that in their junior year, going into their junior year, she has an A. She has 4.0 before right. she even touches the college campus, which is amazing and awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, we preach that, man. We preach that. Uh, take advantage of, you know, once you graduate college, I mean, once you graduate high school uh, outside of FASIA, people don't care about you anymore. Your teachers aren't going to follow up behind you. You know, your counselors aren't going to follow up behind you. So it's like while you're in high school, all these services are surrounding you. You got to take advantage. And I'm so glad you did. Um, now I just want to pivot um, back to maybe junior year. You're looking at colleges. This is probably for you, probably before junior year. <laughs> but you're looking at colleges and you say, okay, Stanford is it. Kind of talk to me about your research towards finding the college that was for you and what you started to maybe do in high school that prepared you for um, where you want to be at, where you're going. So um, my number one, like, model when it came to looking for colleges was, like, full ride first. Mm -hmm. I promised my parents, I was like, you're not going to have to spend a penny on college. So. Hit the applause for that, man. Hit the <laughs> applause for that. <laughs> Absolutely. So I definitely looked at colleges that would give me the most money, money, which tends to be like private colleges, like top 20 highly colleges, selective. highly selective colleges. Yeah. They're the ones that give low income students the most money. So I looked at that, but I also looked at what was great for my major because I didn't want to apply to a top 20 college that wasn't even really good for my major. It's known for another major. I did apply to a lot of in-state colleges as well. like. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of safety schools, I applied to a lot of safety schools because I, I was like, I'm going to school for free no matter what. Right. So I just looked at the schools that would give me the best opportunities but also the most money. And I already started writing, like, my essays for colleges, like, junior year, like, the end of junior year during the summer because I, I knew I was applying to a lot of colleges, and I know that college admissions, they put a lot of emphasis on essays now. It's not only about the grades, it's about your story. And I also did a multitude of summer programs during the summer. I remember when once I realized that I wanted to do computer science, I don't have a lot of experience in computer science, even though when I was younger, I did dabble in a couple of things, but I kind of dropped it afterwards. And so I looked up like, you know, free programs, like free classes for, you know, low income students, like anything I could do to like, learn um, more things, more topics in computer science. I did a program during the school year. It was actually just a product of circumstance because of COVID, everything was online. It's actually a program that was in New York and one of the libraries in New York, but it was online and they opened it to everyone. So I was able to join. I remember doing it at work because I had a job where I was able to bring my laptop. So I put my AirPods in and I would listen in on the class. And then I was like, I like this. So um, I looked at more programs. UIC had a digital scholars program. I did that during the summer. Girls Who Code, they had a program. They actually gave me a stipend as well. I did that during the summer. So the programs are free. So um, that's why I say, like, research definitely because the only way I could have found those programs if I kept Googling, like, free programs during the summer, free classes, right, free right. computer science classes. Yeah. And so I was able to put that on, like, my college application that I did these things during the summer because the programs are also selective. So I also had to, like, write essays and wait to see if I got accepted into those programs. So I was able to put that on my um, application. And then I'm also, like, very involved in my community as well. Like I said earlier, I'm on my district student board of education, which I've been on since, since freshman year. And being on the board, like, you have so many opportunities to, like, make a difference in your school, which is not an opportunity that you can really find, like, anywhere like it's not something that's easy to come by and so I actually I was able to work with the district superintendent to make a incentive program for the district and I feel like wow. that also kind of am like oh. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> she's, she's saying a lot in the I'm sorry. Right I, was like, I was trying I was to cut in but I was letting her tell her story her go. <laughs> but when she yeah. said yeah. you said I created with the superintendent I created an incentive program 
Speak more about that. So um, basically on the student board, there's like about 10 different committees, I believe. And my first year on the board, I ran to be chairperson of the superintendent special committee, which was a fairly new committee. And so the purpose, the superintendent basically wanted a way to motivate students to do better in school. Mm -hmm. And what better way to do that than asking the students how we can do that. Wow. And so freshman year, I know I had a co-chair at the time. So we did a lot of things to kind of research and see what would our classmates want as a reward to do better in school. We started drawing up how can, like, what requirements can we have in the incentive program that will make people be like, okay, next quarter I'm going to do better because I want to get that. And so we kind of created this program that's in the shape of a pyramid. So it's like everybody gets rewarded, but the higher you are in the pyramid, the better reward you get. So it's not like we're giving a consequence to kids who aren't doing as good as others in school. You're still going to get a reward. But if you want a better reward, then you need to climb higher on the pyramid. And that's how we kind of designed the incentive program. And it took a lot of research, serving students and everything. And we actually got it implemented this year. The wow. incentives were like T-shirts and gift cards. So it's like if you were on the highest, like on the pyramid, then you got a gift card to kind of let students know, like we're rewarding you for everything you do in school. But if you want more, then you can also do more as well. So, um, so all my 205 students, man, if you get a gift card or a T-shirt, <laughs> you better think so. Oh, you all <laughs> side of my an applause. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. So just some of the things um, that you said, because you were dropping gems left and right, um, is that you wrote your essay junior year. That's, you know, preparation is everything. You know, uh, but we'll come back to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you applied to safety schools. You know, I think that was amazing to hear that, you know, it was full ride or bust, you know, and bust was not an option. You know, I think, um, you know, people have to have that kind of mindset going into college. You know, even if you're not the highest GPA person, um, it has to be either free college or bust or reduced loans or bust, you know, because it's crazy out here, you know, and to tell your parents, like, y'all aren't ha going to have to pay anything is, one, just a boss move. And to deliver on that <laughs> And process. to deliver on it's that. More it's more impressive. Yes. Boss move. Yes. So, yes. you know. Um, I just want to touch yeah, on something Dan, that Solomon said, and this is the one of the things that we talk about. When you're looking at college choice, we always talk about college match, right? right? So mm -hmm. we're talking about which programs – look the best at that's affordable for you and your family situation. So if you're hard working and you're able to gain financial aid and scholarships, perfect. If you're not, then how do you not compromise the quality education that you're seeking, but still let it be affordable? Sometimes that does require you to go to the community college, complete your general education courses, and then transfer as a transfer student because mm -hmm. not only do incoming freshmen have scholarships as each institution, sometimes they have scholarships strictly for those transfer students from community college. So it really falls back on understanding what it is you want for your experience. At the end right. of the day, you as an individual student will have that experience. Your yeah. parents won't have that experience. As, as proud as I am of my kids, I did not live that experience. That right. was their experience. And so just being open. And one of the things that I know I did for my children is those, my daughter who worked extremely hard, I allow her to make those choices of schools. Mm -hmm. I help guide her but she made ultimately the choice. And the same thing with Solomon saying, hey, I know I have some top tiers, but if they don't bring the financial aid package that makes sense for my family, I'm comfortable with going with those schools that may not be as good, but they're going to help me financially get my Absolutely. bachelor's degree and move on with little to no debt. Yeah, and we talk about that all the time. And we actually had a college match episode and we, you know, a lot of the reason students choose a school is because they follow somebody there or they, you know, oh, well, it's Jackson well, I saw State it on or TV it's, or something, it's, it's, yeah. or or it's it's Harvard. You know, yeah. like Solomon said. You know, I applied to the highly selective schools that you know had a good program Correct. and what I'm in. So, Correct. Um, yeah, college matches everything, and and you just confirm so much of what we preach. Um, so, students, you know, if you don't listen to Mr. Hawkins, listen to Solomon. <laughs> right, right. I'm okay, as right, long right. as you get the information. Look, I mean, yeah. uh, and. and Let's just circle back to um, writing your essay junior year. I know there are a ton of people who are listening to you as a Gates winner. You know, there are a lot of Gates applicants, but there are few Gates winners. 
a uh, few uh, Stanford admits, you know, so clearly, you know, your essay is a big part of that. Kind of talk to me about, you know, your writing process, your creative process, um, and what you think it was that, you know, made the admissions rep say, like, I want this person, or made the um, Gates scholarship rep say, I want this, this person needs or deserves this scholarship. So, um, towards the end of my junior year, that's when I started, like, making Google Docs with scholarship and college, like, essay prompts. And then it's not even like I would, like, oh, finish writing the essay in one day or anything. I would just, first of all, start putting down bullet points of, like, ideas of what I wanted to write like oh maybe I could write about this and that and then I'll just keep going back to it day by day that's why I wanted to start early because you know your mind changes a lot when you're writing an essay and the more time you leave for it to look back I feel like the better your essay can be so I started with just like a multitude of like different ideas for each essay prompt I watched a lot of videos I looked at a lot of articles I definitely watched a lot of videos of people who, like, let's say, got accepted into Stanford, and they will go on YouTube and say, oh, like, this is what I wrote. And it's not that I will copy them, but I will just take inspiration, like, Mm. oh, she wrote about this. And I tried to stray away from emphasizing my academics because I know they can already see that in my transcript. They can see I have nice grades. So I wanted to (laughs) emphasize, like, what I do and, like, the person I am. Definitely the essay prompts, I made sure to really dissect the essay prompts so that I know I'm answering exactly what they want and also just Googling, like, what are they looking for with these with this essay prompt? So if they're asking this, what are they trying to get from me? And I wanted to make sure that I would give them exactly that. I emphasize my community, my background, like, my heritage a lot, in my essays, my leadership in school. And I just kept... I just kept going at it during the summer, the beginning of senior year. I started finalizing it. But that's basically what I did. And just doing a lot of research, honestly, because I feel like if I didn't do a lot of research, I wouldn't have realized how much work and what I should write in my essay. Because my essay was still me, but just looking at, like, what do they want? I feel Mm -hmm. like that's just so important. Like, just looking at what what are they looking for? Like, I would look, because Stanford was my top school. So I'm like, what is Stanford looking for? Like, what are they looking for in an African? Like, who do they want on their campus? And I would try to, like, make gym. sure, like, this is, <laughs> like, this is I'm me. I'm sorry, I gotta keep calling it out. That's a gym. That's a gym. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's okay. Um, I know, like, when I was researching what Stanford was looking for, they're looking for somebody who loves to learn. So I made sure I created my application as somebody who loves to learn. Because I know a lot of people said that they love people who just do different things. They just love learning stuff. So I made sure I did that. If another school was like, they like people who do this, I would make sure my essay showed that that's who I am. So just you have to do a lot of research on the schools you're applying to and not just look at the, don't take the essay prompts at face value, basically. You really have to do a lot of research, honestly. Just a lot of Googling, yeah. basically. So two things. One, for all the students, you keep hearing Salomon say during the summer, during the summer, yeah. during the summer, which means she's not taking the summer off. Right. She's working just as hard in the summer as she is during the fall and the spring semesters. Crucial, Jim, as you said. Yeah. yeah. Number two, she talked about not repeating what's on your transcript. They already see that as an admissions director or somebody who's looking Number at one that, mistake right? We, a lot of us You make, talk about yeah. your classes, they get it. They see it on the transcripts. What they're looking for is, what kind of student are you bringing to our campus? Yes. Do you fit our community? Are you going to engage our community? Are you going to make our college campus better because you've come on our campus? So talking about maybe your heritage, your background, some of your interests, some of your involvement in the school, being on the school board, talking about this incentive program is amazing for a high school student. So we would assume that you're going to bring those skill set to our campus and engage our student population in some form of that. And so it's to those students who are listening to Solomon, we get it. You worked hard on those grades. They are already recorded on your transcripts. Yes. Tell the institution why they need you on their campus, yes. right? You need me on your campus because I'm this person. I'm a hard worker. I love to learn. I'm engaged. That won't change. And so I'm looking to bring those those qualities to your campus. Yes. And I remember we did a HBCU tour. I think this is pre-pandemic. Um, and we went to Vanderbilt. That's not an HBCU, but it was a stop we had to make, you know, on the way south. Um, but we talked to the admissions rep, and she was like, you know, there are people who are smarter than smart, you know, that apply to this school, and we reject them because it's like your academics aren't everything. So 
just really, really good stuff to hear. I, I'm sorry for interrupting and saying Jim, <laughs> but I just, I really want our listeners to understand, like, um, you know, when you said you strayed away from your academics and you focused on who you were as a person and what made you different and um, the different schools, I think that was another gen that you looked up different schools, um, you know, on YouTube or, or researched and um, you would tune your essay to those schools and what kind of student they were looking for. I think that's super important. Um, but another thing, I think what I'm hearing from you is that you wanted this and you wanted it bad. Um, and I think that's so important when we talk about not just graduating, but graduating debt free and graduating, you know, with all the resources you need for college, you have to want it, you know, um, there used to be a time in, um, you know, our parents' lives or, um, where you can you could go to college and not really care about it in high school and it, you would be paid for it. It, it it would be good but that's not the reality today yeah college is expensive right we yeah. know that that's not a secret but it's affordable if you put the work in exactly and, and the work comes with the reward of scholarships um doing the research understanding your options um as our ceo dr mckenzie always mm -hmm. states success is not an accident so right. when we look at our students, all of our trios across the country, those students who allow us to support them and they do the work because we only could do so much. But when right. they do the work, we, we consistently see success, even though they're first generation underserved population. So we're not talking about, we understand the challenges that our first generation low income students face, but that has nothing to do with the ability to accomplish their dreams and goals. And so while we motivate, while we communicate, uh, we encourage them to do the work. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you hear nothing else, the work will show itself at the end, as, as Solomon is a testament to that. Yeah. And so um, as we continue our conversation, we're just super excited for Solomon. And she's she's really graduating with a group of her, her, her peers that are mm -hmm. doing some amazing things as well. Yes. And so what I look at, when I look at all of them, they're consistently the same thing. They're hard workers. They have what I call positive peer pressure, where they kind of push each other and they're competitive mm. in what they're doing academically. So when we talk about students and saying, well, that's a negative influence, there's also the other side where those influence. students who are positively saying, hey, did you, what did you get on your test? Oh, I got a 99. What, I got a 100. And how'd you, how'd you get that question? You yeah. studied me and you ain't giving me. Yeah. That thing happens as well. The circle. And you want to make sure that you're re very intentional or conscious of the people that you surround yourself Man. with. So um, I know that's this off track be, a little bit, but this, this I'm be just a talking 24 about hour what, what podcast, man, <laughs> yeah. just the just everything y'all bring up is, is it's so important, you know. Just having those people who you who do you surround yourself with, you know? Um, do you surround yourself people with people who are aiming for debt free, who are going home and telling their parents, y'all don't even have to worry about college. I don't even want y'all to think about that. Absolutely, you know. Um, just amazing stuff. Give me some more applause for Hawkins and, and uh, Mr. Hawkins and Solomon. Just amazing, amazing. Um, I kind of just wanted to talk about, uh, we preach as people who work here, they can, we preach upper bound. We preach what it can do for you. We preach participating. Um, but a student can say, well, it's y'all, y'all get paid to say this. You know, um, you had to get up and you had to, you know, meet with Mr. Hawkins, you were a student, you know, so I kind of just want you to talk about, you know, the benefits of Upper Bound, what it did for you, um, and what you think it could do for other students. I think, like, one of the biggest benefits of Upper Bound would be it being, like, my rock when it comes to um, doing things, like, my whole high school career, like, I knew I could always go to Mr. Hawkins for anything, like, literally anything, I could ask him any question. I, I feel like it's not easy to do that when you're first gen and low income, like especially if you're first generation, you can't really easily ask your parents what about this or that 
you know, if they didn't go to college. But I know I could go to the Upper Bound office. I could email Mr. Hawkins, especially during the summer, especially during the pandemic when it's not like we could see each other face to face. I would just get on my Gmail and I would email Mr. Hawkins like anything I needed, which was really helpful because you don't know, like Mr. Hawkins could bring up something that he even know that he could do for me. So I think that's one big benefit of Upper Bound. Just it's an amazing resource and always having people to support you, like always knowing like I know there's one person that has my back if I need anything. I know I can go to Mr. Hawkins for anything. So I never feel alone in anything I do because I know I always have like that support system there. It's just an amazing support system. And you know that does not stop just because you're going to Stanford. You know, this is... You do know that you can't leave us. (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 no. (laughs) Oh, we are going to be be in your life for a very long time. (laughs) Uh, But uh, we are excited about that. And that goes for any of, you know, the people who are coming to contact with um, Fasia and Upper Bound. Um, or just upper bound programs across the country. You know, yes. we really, this is an, it's our job, yes, but it's also an investment. You know, here at see I can specifically speak that everybody who works here is personally invested in, you know, you and your future. Well, I think something that the, the forefathers, when they wrote the legislative intent of TRIO, I think something that they did kind of may go by a lot of people. You know this. When you apply for these jobs, you have to hire directors and coordinators who come from that background, Absolutely. right? It's written and so, in our grant. so when we look at those students that we service, we see ourselves often, right? And so those individuals who, if we we're fortunate enough, um, I just happened, whether it been a coach or somebody else, I had to bump my head and figure it out. Whereas with Solomon and others, we were there, as she said, she knew the office, she knew the email and things of that nature. And so being able to identify with the student is so important because now you understand what that is. And so I understand the language. I understand the anxiety when you don't say it. Me and Solomon has had quick conversations and she won't even mention, I'll say, Solomon, listen, you don't have to worry about that. You've worked hard. That's not a concern of yours. Let's concern ourselves with this other part of it. And she would smile and say, thank you, Mr. Hawks. I preach. Cause I already knew what was going on because again, although I'm farly removed age wise, <laughs> the, the experience doesn't change, right? I know what it felt like to go to a college campus. I me mean, particularly going to a PWI and, not being not seeing any of my peers that I was accustomed to seeing and feeling like do I belong here and things of that nature and fortunately uh, Mr. Jim Vance who was the director at the time um, just basically being a mentor to me calling me hey Hawkins did you make it to class yeah Mr. Vance I made the class so I was a little late all right make sure you get that in mind okay so having that and and feeling accountable to him helped me to graduate and again being a first generation student so I say all that to say when we look at our students we understand some of the things they go through and some of the barriers because, again, we come from that demographic. And, again, I think it was very intentional and very intelligent for those who wrote the grant and legislative intent to make sure that those individuals could identify with those students they were going to be working with. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. Any any other benefit that you think Upper Bound had or you kind of <laughs> covered it? Or? Um, definitely, like, the college tours. I think that's... That's really nice. Like, we have fun on the college tours, but being able to, like, go see different colleges and it's paid for, like, you know, obviously Mm -hmm. by FASIA, by Upper Bound, that's an opportunity that not many get. You know, people who are higher income, they're able to go to, they're able to fly out to different states Mm -hmm. and see different colleges and talk to people and everything. And that's an opportunity that a lot of first gen low income students, we can't just easily say, hey, mom, let's hop on a flight and go see this college. Exactly. So that's an opportunity that the SIA um, gives its students, which is really nice. Like I'm able to hear like I my school is predominantly low income, but I hear people like saying like, oh, we went to this college and we went to this state. Like that's that's an amazing opportunity. Honestly. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all about even in the playing field. Like it's true. If you go on, I've been on these Ivy League campuses and you see you know, our Asian brothers and sisters are, you know, Caucasian and, and, and I don't see us, you know, so for us to step foot on those campuses, you know, even the HBCU tour, you know, um, one of our recent college grads, Imani Lewis, she was on the HBCU tour with us and she got admitted to the college that she graduated from, you know, on those tours. So 
yeah, amazing, amazing. So, is there any other advice that you're like, man, like I gotta, I gotta tell younger people this, you know, if they're gonna make it, they need to know this thing. Um, definitely, I feel like if if you want to do something, just keep at it, like, and don't let anybody else influence you. Because I feel like during, especially during the pandemic, that's when I took advantage of a lot of these summer programs because it was virtual. So I could multi, like, I was working and doing the virtual programs and taking the class because everything was online. So I'm like, I'm going to do it. I can do it. A lot of people told me I was doing too much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, dang, am I doing too much? Like, am I, like, too focused on this or whatever? So don't feel discouraged if people are like, oh, my goodness, it's not that, it's going to work out, whatever. Just keep at it. Like, if you have a goal, just keep at it and don't let anybody discourage you. Because I was kind of close to being discouraged. Like, oh, like, what if it's all for nothing? Or that, like, you know, people are saying I'm doing so much. Maybe I am doing so much. But I just kept going at it. So just have a goal. Use your resources. Research a lot. Like, use Google. Like, <laughs> like Google. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wrote one of my essays on, like, using the Internet. I wrote, like, an essay on how, like, the Internet, like, was a really big part of how I got to where I am and how I find resources. Because, like, we're in an age, we're in a digital age now. You can find anything on the Internet. So if you're looking for something, just... Google it basically, but just keep your goal in mind. Don't let anybody discourage you and research and you have a support system. Like I said, like having Mr. Hawkins is my support system. Like I would talk to him like during the um, application process, I was really stressed out and talking to Mr. Hawkins really helped me calm down and everything. So definitely using your resources, like upper bounce an amazing resource. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. We could be here all day and I <laughs> promise, I'm not for no, I promise. But, um, just, it's just so fascinating. How, but how, talk to me about how you kind of handled the pressure of, okay, I wrote for the Gates scholarship. I wrote to get into Stanford. I wrote for the Jack Kent cook. Now I'm waiting to hear back. I'm not hearing anything. What's going on? I know, I know that's a stressful <laughs> process. So kind of talk to me about. And yes, out of my was stressful. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> <laughs> and so talk to me about, you know, what else you did to kind of alleviate that pressure. Um, so I'm a very like impatient person and Mr. Hawkins knows this. Like I'm not patient at all. Hey, Actually <laughs> <laughs> I applied to all of my colleges early because I know I'm impatient. Yeah. <laughs> so um, honestly, just talking to my parents and like thinking of the worst possible scenario and like like I don't know, like it won't be that bad. Like just think about the worst possible mm. thing. I'm like, it's still not that bad. So like if the worst thing does happen, I'm like, it's okay. I already said it wasn't that bad, but or, like, hanging out with friends, too. Just doing things to take my mind off of it. Because, like I said, I remember talking to Mr. Hawkins. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm like, <laughs> what if it's not, like, what if it doesn't work out? Like, I apply to, like, what if they all reject me or whatever? We've had several of those conversations. <laughs> I'm like, Solomon, you tripping. I have a 5.3 yeah, yeah, GPA. Yeah, yeah, you tripping, Solomon. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't want to seem like, oh, like, I'm bragging, like, oh, I yeah. got all A's. And I'm not going to get accepted into any college. Like, it wasn't like, it was, I'm just somebody who... I'm very paranoid, so mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, like, anything could happen. Like, I've right. seen stories on the Internet where people would have perfect 4.0, 1,600 GPA, I mean, 1,600 SAT mm -hmm. store score, and they cured cancer, and they still don't get in. Yeah. So I'm like, who am I to say, like, I'm definitely going to get in? Yeah. So I was definitely worried about that, but obviously it it worked out in the end. I know I would tell Mr. Hawkins I'm leaving it up to God. So yeah. and, 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 I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't come to that. One of the things that I always say is, as she said, let's look at the worst case scenario. You will get accepted by someone. It's impossible for all this work to go without some acceptance. Mm -hmm. You still have an idea once we get out of college what you want your life to be. That won't be altered. You may not get in. If we don't get into the school, you'll have a different experience, but it'll still be your experience. And so it was just, as she said, we just talked through it. And I'm like, Solomon, you've done the work. So once you've done the work, you've done everything you can, there's nothing more to worry about. The process will take care of itself. Absolutely. Whether it's the ideal process and what students don't sometimes understand, even as adults, the path that you thought you should have been on, once you get to the other side and realize, I, I'm glad I did. For instance, coming out of high school, I wanted to go to an HBCU. When I got to the other side, I realized that wouldn't have been good for me at that time as the student that I was. I wasn't mature enough at that time. 
to probably handle the HBCU experience. Right. So going to a PWI and being uncomfortable helped me learn so many lessons about how to be comfortable around different things. So we had those conversations and, and it was just not encouraging. It was being realistic. Like, hey, it may not work out and that's fine. But that not working out won't mean you won't have other options because right. you prepared yourself over, for yeah. options. Yeah. yeah. And so we had several, several, <laughs> several conversations. <laughs> yes. And we're here today. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, that is pretty much it for me. Um, I just want to recap, just writing down some of the the gems you said. You know, Salamat um, was dropping them left and right. So I caught a few. Uh, but she said that she wrote her essay junior year, man. She prepared. She uh, came. She came into high school knowing what she wanted, you know. Um, and and it's okay if you don't know what you want. If you're listening, and you're like, well, she knew what she wanted to do, you know. But um, she still worked towards it, you know. And that's my advice. If you don't know what you want to do, still any progress is forward progress. So always be like like Solomon said be researching be take career you know assessments take college assessments and uh, but you have to prepare you know and write that essay junior year apply to safety schools you know um don't just assume that you have a college in mind that you're going to get in there you know um stay involved in your community um when you're writing your essays stray away from the academics and focus on yourself as a person um, and, and after you've applied, leave room for God and, and, um, alleviate as much stress as possible and understand that it'll work out. So thank you so much for coming in today. Uh, like I said, this can be a four, five, six part, <laughs> um, podcast, but this is amazing. We are so proud of you. We know this is not the end. You have so much more to do. And like I said, I, I'm not going to let you forget about me. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you come back and do this podcast. I don't care if I gotta fly out to wherever you at, you know. So uh we uh look forward to just documenting and, and keeping in touch with your success. Mr. Hawkins, thank you for coming in and, and being amazing at your job. No, if Solomon was here, I had to be here you know, to represent you know? and support. Yes. 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 So uh with that being said, we are gonna sign off. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Facia Trio. And my name is Daniel McKenzie and I am signing off. <laughs>